This video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Hey beautiful people, I'm Lucy and first of all I just want to say I hope that you guys are doing okay. I hope that you're staying safe and healthy and just doing whatever you can to get through this right now. And if that's, you know, hustling away or sitting on the couch watching Netflix, I'm right there with you. So yeah, I thought I would put together a fun little editing video because I always feel editing kind of zones me out, puts me in a different frame of mind. And I wanted everyone to be able to take part in this. So I have actually included the download link to the image that I'm gonna use in this tutorial. So you can click that link in the description, download the image, and then watch this tutorial and actually edit along with me. I think it should be fun and you guys have asked me to do this a lot. So here we go, let's get into Lightroom. All right, so we're here in Lightroom, and if you guys feel like it, click that link in the description below, and you can download this photo in raw file format so we can actually edit together. Now, this is the before, and this is the after. This is what we're gonna get towards working in this edit. So before, after, before, after. So you can see there's been some subtle changes, but they make a big difference to how the photo looks in the end. So let's go over to an unedited version and I'm going to show you guys how I got to that point in the photo. So here we are. Now, the first thing you want to do with portraits is it is very much so about the eyes and you want how the eyes are lit and like how they reflect light. Um, to be really powerful and also to make sense. Now, if we zoom in here, you can kind of see looking at it that the window is actually reflected more in this light, in this eye, than in this eye. And that's basically just because of like the angle of my head at the time. So while this is how the light naturally uh, reflected, it gives kind of a bit of a strange look when the one eye looks so much um, brighter than the other one. So when I'm doing a portrait, this is always the first thing I do is I just try to go in and fix the eyes. If you had any major issues in your image with white balance, you could go and just fix that very first, but I'm actually don't mind the white balance in this photo. So I'm going to leave that. So I'm just going to go right and focus on the eyes. So we're going to zoom in here. Now, what I need to do is this one is substantially brighter than this one. And I want them to be basically closer to the same, just so that, you know, your eye isn't distracted of like, oh, why, which eye to look at basically. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here to the adjustment brush, tap on that. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna bring up the exposure and we're gonna bring up the shadows and the whites. Now we're gonna take our brush over here, gonna make it a lot smaller so you can just bring that down, bring down the size. Uh, I can just do it on my mouse. I can just wheel it to make it smaller. So if you have that feature, just do it that way. And now we're kind of kind of just go in over the eye and we're just targeting the white points. So just the reflection, just the parts that already are white is what we're targeting. Now this, whenever you use the brush, it creates like a little point so you know where it's there. If you press the H key, it will make that disappear so you can actually see what you're editing because if you leave it you can't really tell if you're getting the look you want so press that and take a step back now i think the exposure could even be a little bit more and that's looking pretty good so basically what we've done is we're trying to make the two white spots of the eye equal in both eyes you might have to zoom out to see if you're doing it correctly and kind of go a bit back and forth. You can also uh, press this little button here to turn it off and on to see if you're kind of going in the right direction. With this one, I think I actually would add a bit more white and maybe a bit more exposure. You know, you, you don't wanna do it too much, but you do wanna try to match it as much as possible. I think that that's pretty good. Mm, no, <laughs> I did it too much. So let's just bring that down. Bring that down a little bit. Better to be less, better to be more subtle than to be obviously overboard. That's kind of my motto. So if you're not sure if something's too much, just rein it in a little bit. So the next thing I'm gonna do is start a new adjustment brush. You can double click effect to just reset it. We're gonna bring up the exposure a little bit. We're gonna bring up the shadows and the saturation. And what we're gonna do this time is make your brush a little bit bigger and we're just gonna go over all 
the color of the eye. And we're gonna do that for both of them. Now, if you're never sure where your brush is getting, like actually highlighting, you can press the O key on your keyboard or you can press show mask over lay down here and it shows you. So I can see I've kind of covered actually that white point. So I might hit option. And what that does is I now have the erase tool of this brush and I might just kind of go like that so that that part isn't really part of that. So now I can hit the O key again and that takes away the red. The red is just showing you what you have highlighted. So take that away and now maybe we'll increase that a bit and maybe increase the saturation. I don't know, a bit more. I mean, sometimes you see those really fake looking eyes and it's just really weird. So, you know, I always, like I said, do a bit less, but you can always like go back and forth and check it out. Like that, that probably is good at this point. I have naturally very dark eyes, so there's no point in me making them look like I have like really bright light eyes because I just don't, so it's it's not natural, right? Um, okay, so now that we're happy with that, we'll do the next step. Again, another adjustment brush. I can't speak to how much I love the adjustment brush and I'm just obsessed with it and I think it's amazing. So for this brush, um, I'm actually gonna just bring down the shadows and the blacks and I'm gonna just do one little dot in the middle, just right where the pupil is just to kind of create a bit of that contrast and like make sure that through all of that lightning, I keep that part dark. All right, zooming out. We're looking pretty good. So there's the before of everything and there's what I've done so far. I think it's really important to always go back and forth during your edit with the before and after and that's the backslash key um, because you wanna see if you kind of going with a good tone to your edit or if you're just like going off the rails. So at this point, I kind of like where it is. Um, it's looking pretty good. So now we're gonna focus in again, we're still on the eyes. This is where you spend most of your time in a portrait. We're gonna grab another adjustment brush and this time we're gonna bring up the exposure and the shadows. Now with sometimes dark circles under eyes, you know, erasing them or doing a clone stamp, you can try it, but you can run into the issue of it just looking so fake. So lately I've kind of haven't been doing that and I kind of just try to work with the light to sort of fix the problems. Raising shadows on a face will sort of naturally lighten those areas. And then if you bring down the highlights, you're kind of finding a good middle tone. So what I do on the eye is I kind of cover this whole area, the eye and everything around it. And then I like to bring up that exposure a bit and bring up the shadows. So that just kind of gives a really kind of nice evened out tone look. Now, the next thing that we do is, again, still on the eyes now, because why not? So at this point, I wanna make sure that the eyes are the sharpest thing and that they have some contrast going on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in, we're gonna get another adjustment brush, we're gonna up the contrast, we're going to bring the blacks down, which means we're making them darker, and we're going to increase sharpness. And now we're kind of kind of just go over all these elements of the eye. So the eyelashes, eye. And this is sort of up to you on how you want to do it. I also do it on the eyebrows. we're just sort of bringing more attention in there. Now, if you wanted, you could like not highlight little wrinkles and stuff, not sharpen them, but this is human skin. I kind of have just embraced how human skin looks, so I'm cool with that. So there we go. We can look at the before again, and there's the after, and you can see how we've really kind of made a bit more focus on the eyes there. Um, one thing I can kind of see is that when I did those big stamps on the eyes though, I went a bit overboard. So I'm going to press H key. We're going to go to, kind of have to go find the one. 
Uh, hit option to go to erase. And first hit O, show it, option erase. And I put that over onto the hair. So I definitely did not want that. Now, the next thing I would do is go on to skin. So we're gonna just zoom in to the face here. Grab this little um, clone stamp or spot removal tool. Uh, you can prep it on heal or on clone. Clone means it's gonna actually copy another part completely. Heal means it takes the data around it and kind of figures out what it should be. So sometimes heal is better, sometimes clone. I have a video all about them, so you can check that out if you want. Uh, I'm gonna just get rid of that there. Uh, we'll do this, we'll do this. And I think sometimes stray hairs, I don't mind, but this one's just kind of distracting. So we'll cover that and we'll do this one too. Now, just so you know, if you didn't like where it picks what it's sort of sampling, you can always just go grab it and move it. And I usually, for stuff like this, like it to sample from right beside. So again, hit H if you wanna actually see what it did and if you like it. And yeah, that looks good. So we're gonna hit done. Now that we've done this, the next thing that we wanna do is we want to just do a basic skin smooth on everything. Um, I'm pretty lucky in this scenario in that the light very much helped my skin. When you get light just coming in from one source and it's like a big diffused light, um, that alone can just fix skin and make it look amazing. Um, and so this photo, it doesn't need too much because it had a lot of help from the lighting, but a little bit will definitely help. So go gra grab that adjustment brush tool and double click effect to reset it. Now, one thing that you might not know you can do is if you have auto mask selected on your brush, you can make your brush super big. And then if you just tap on the area that you want, it kind of tries to auto select that tone. Now, it doesn't always do an amazing job of this, but it does a pretty good job. So in this case, I'm actually gonna go to color and We'll grab this to just pick this area. And now it's actually focused in on the skin there. So I would say that that is pretty good. So now what we're gonna do with this brush is we'll actually have to hit option and erase because it did go into the hair, but it did a pretty good job and it saved me having to go into like all of those little areas, right? You also wanna make sure that you're not doing this on the lips because the lips we actually want to have a bit more happening there and maybe not on the eyebrows so now i'm going to hit that o key so i can actually see what i'm changing um, and i'm going to bring down the texture the texture tool is kind of a new tool in lightroom i did a video about it so check it out if you like and it just kind of basically reads things like hair and skin and all of that and gives you that really good look. So really, that's probably all that you need at this point. Um, so there's no texture and there's taking the texture down a little bit. If you do anything all the way, it does not look good. Don't try to make skin look like a Barbie skin or like plastic. It just is very, very strange. So I like to do a little bit to kind of, you know, just even everything out, but you still wanna see some pores, you still wanna see what skin actually looks like. Now, one thing I would say at this point is, I think that I maybe have made the eyes a bit too bright, just looking at it. Like in the before, I actually like how dark some of that is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another adjustment brush and I'm actually just going to bring down the shadows and the blacks and I'm going to kind of go over the eyes a bit and just to kind of bring that definition back into the photo right there. So before, after, before, after. Yeah, I think like you need some contrast in your photo to have like some interest. So making that darker definitely helped. All right, so the next thing is you wanna start looking at everything else going on in your photo. So the kind of next main thing in this one would be the sweater. So I'm gonna grab another adjustment brush. 
Um, my editing style is very heavy on the adjustment brushes. I just feel like you have to go in to all the different elements to get the look that you want. Um, it's very hard to do universal one click edit type thing and have a photo that really looks the way that you want. So for the sweater, it's like a really cute mohair sweater. So I want to enhance how like the weave of it. So I'm really bringing up the texture in it and we're just covering everything. And I might as well just go over the jean too, just to make the whole outfit really stand out. All right, texture, maybe a bit of clarity and that's looking good. Okay, now one thing I might do on the overall photo here is down in uh, the HSL panel, I'm going to increase the saturation of this red, and that also kind of increased the saturation on the lip a bit, which is kind of nice. And I'm also going to increase the luminance on it. Very nice. You can see it kind of affects orange a little bit as well when you just click this and click on the color. But yeah, no, I really like where that's going. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is on the lips. What we kind of have happening here is that this is super red and the lips are kind of of that red. So I might even try to just up the sharpness of the lips a little bit so that there's a bit of color consistency between the two and I'm going to add some more texture to the lips too. So just highlight all of that. We hit the O key to see that I've covered everything. And I have, nice. So maybe we'll just increase the saturation a bit more. I find if you're doing stuff like that, you wanna zoom out to see how it looks because when you're zoomed in, you think everything looks great and then you zoom out and you're like, what did I do? So around there looks good. So there's the before and there is the after. We've really cleaned up the whole look. Now, one thing that I like to do to make the subject pop from the background is actually sharpen the whole subject and soften the background. Uh, I know that you can kind of do this in camera and you can see there is a bokeh happening here. I feel like if you do it well in editing, you can really take that effect to the next level. So we're gonna go up the sharpness. So we got that. Um, we'll just take the erase to get rid of that and unselect. And yeah, so now we have the sharpness there and maybe I'll do like the littlest bit of clarity. Like such a little amount. Now what we wanna do to make this whole thing work and also kind of fix the coloring in this because you'll notice I didn't do anything with the white balance, but the image is a bit orangey, um, but the skin tone looks great. So I'm gonna show you how you can bring down the oranginess of your image, make the subject pop, but still keep that warm vibe. So again, we're gonna go to the adjustment brush. I guess this video could have just been about the adjustment brush, but whatever, I just, I love it. I love the adjustment brush, that's the jam. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring down sharpness, we're gonna bring down clarity, we're gonna bring down texture, and we are going to cover the entire background. And you can also just go and erase stuff afterwards, right? So we are covering the entire background now. Okay, hit option to get the eraser tool because we don't want any of the subject to be covered in this because we're changing the color in the background and we are changing like basically the focus of the background. So if it's on the subject, it's gonna kind of throw off the whole thing that we're trying to kind of achieve. So you do have to be a bit careful with this and take a bit of extra time in your, uh, as you're doing this part. You just wanna make sure that you get everything correctly. Okay. So we're gonna take off the O key and we can kind of see that we've softened the background quite a bit. Like I always say, if I went like full soften, now we are in the realm of this does not look natural. If you're going for that look, that's fine, but I'm trying to create a natural kind of look. So that goes way too far to the realm of like fantasy look. So you just need to find that point where 
you get the desired effect of the back background is kind of much blurred than it actually is. There's a great separation happening, but we're not going to kind of cartoony world. So this part is looking pretty good. And now at this point, I'm actually going to bring the temperature down in the background. And so the temperature is needs to get some blue in it to cool it down. So this part's totally subjective in how far you want to go with it. Something like that really makes the subject pop out because the subject is still warm and has that warm light on it. And so it really gives it a separation from the background. You can keep it just a little bit and then you have an overall warm look. I actually feel like both of these looks work. So I'm just gonna bring down, make it a bit cooler uh, to get my final look there. So let's look at that before. In the before, you can see, um, you know, the lighting was really good and the color was great, so we had a lot to work with. And then we just used all of those tips to get to this point where now we have a really polished looking final photo. So at this point, you can kind of go ahead and do whatever you like. Um, you'll notice we didn't do a lot with um, anything in here, but I might go in, add some tone curve in this if I decided, you know, I want this to have a cinematic look. Uh, like a cinematic vintage flat look, I could, you know, bring, just do a very simple S curve and bring up those shadows. So when you bring up the shadows, that's how you kind of get a matte look, right? Um, and if you do bring up shadows, then normally what I would do is I would go in and bring down the black point just to kind of offset that. Another thing that you could do is you could go into the grain, which you all know that I love, and you could add some grain to your photo just to, again, increase sort of that cinematic kind of look for it. It's not something that is necessary at all. Once you kind of get to the basic point of the edit, you're basically done, and then it turns into what kind of other things do you wanna to do to give your photo a specific look and feel. So once again, there is the before and there's the after. Before, after, before, after. And that's how easy it is to level up your portrait editing. I have to say thank you so much to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Storyblocks gives you unlimited access to over a million video clips, B-roll clips, After Effects templates, really anything you could need to make an awesome video. Like seriously, you could make a whole short video just off of stock footage from Storyblocks. The thing I really, really love about them though is that all of their content is completely royalty free for commercial and personal use. So I can use those clips on YouTube, I can use them for personal project, and most importantly, for commercial client work, which really, really comes in handy. Like right now, there'd be a couple projects that I just could not finish if I didn't have those clips on Storyblocks that I could just go grab, put them in the video and just finish it so it's off my plate and done and everyone is happy. So if you guys wanna try out Storyblocks, click that link in the description below. I think you guys will love it. I think they're a great company and their product is awesome. Now let me know if you liked this video, if you liked having the download image and actually editing along with me. I thought it was pretty fun. Uh, be sure to follow and tag me on Instagram at the Lucy Martin. If you do any cool edits, let me know what kind of videos you guys would like and also let me know how you guys are doing right now. I genuinely hope that you guys are all doing okay and staying well, so let me know and we'll have a little chat in the comments and get some social, some social commentary going down there. Anyways, I love you guys. Peace out.